ever pondered about what NATO is and why it was formed, let's embark on a journey to unravel these mysteries together. Welcome to our exploration of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, better known by its acronym NATO. This international alliance stretches beyond what its name might suggest, with its influence reaching far across the globe. NATO is a political and military alliance, a band of nations, if you will, committed to safeguarding the freedom and security of its member countries through political and military means. Imagine a group of friends who've pledged to stand up for each other, no matter the circumstances. That's NATO, but on a grand international scale. This alliance was born out of the ashes of World War II, a time when the world was reeling from the aftermath of a catastrophic conflict. In the wake of such devastation, 12 nations came together, promising to protect each other. This pledge was the cornerstone of NATO, an alliance that has since grown to include 30 countries from North America and Europe. NATO's primary role in international politics is maintaining peace and stability. It does this by promoting democratic values and encouraging cooperation on defense and security issues. In essence, NATO aims to prevent conflicts from escalating, and if they do, it has the military power to manage them. To put it in perspective, NATO is like the world's top-notch security guard, ensuring that its members can sleep peacefully at night, knowing that they have a powerful ally watching over them. It's a team that believes in the principle of collective defense. An attack on one is considered an attack on all. But NATO isn't just about military might. It's also a platform for member countries to discuss and resolve issues peacefully. It's a place where countries, despite their differences, come together with a common goal to ensure a peaceful and secure world. So, ready to dive into the history and evolution of NATO? Stay tuned. The inception of NATO dates back to the 20th century, a period filled with political tension. The year was 1949, and the world was still nursing the wounds of the Second World War. The Cold War was beginning to take shape casting a long shadow over the relative peace that the world had just started to enjoy. The fear of Soviet expansion in Europe was palpable. The USSR, with its communist ideology, was seen as a threat to the democratic nations of the West. The Eastern Bloc, under Soviet influence, was expanding, and Western Europe feared it would be next. There was a pressing need for a collective defense mechanism, a shield to protect the democratic nations from the looming threat of the East. Enter NATO, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. Born out of necessity, this military alliance was created to counter the perceived threat from the Soviet Union. Twelve nations came together, signing the North Atlantic Treaty in Washington, D.C. These founding members, including the United States, Canada, and ten Western European nations, pledged to defend each other in the event of an external attack. The treaty's famous Article 5 declared that an armed attack against one member in Europe or North America would be considered an attack against them all. This principle of collective defense was, and still is, the cornerstone of NATO. It was a clear message to the USSR and the rest of the world. An attack on one is an attack on all. The formation of NATO was more than just a military alliance. It was a statement of unity, a demonstration of the shared values of democracy, individual liberty, and the rule of law. It was a commitment to peace, security, and stability in the North Atlantic area. The creation of NATO was a turning point in world history. It marked the start of a new era, an era of alliances and collective defense, an era that reshaped the geopolitical landscape of the world. And that, my friends, marked the birth of NATO. But now, who forms this powerful alliance? Let's find out. NATO, or the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, is a formidable alliance that was initially composed of 12 countries. These founding members were Belgium, Canada, Denmark, France, Iceland, Italy, Luxembourg, the Netherlands, Norway, Portugal, the United Kingdom, and the United States. This powerhouse of an alliance was formed in 1949 and its members were united by their commitment to mutual defense in response to an attack by any external party. But the NATO family didn't stop growing there. Over the years, the alliance has expanded its ranks, bringing the current total to 30 members. This expansion was not random, but the result of a careful selection process. Each new member 
had to meet certain criteria to be included in this prestigious alliance. They had to demonstrate their commitment to the democratic values that underpin NATO, show their willingness to contribute to the alliance's collective defense, and prove their ability to contribute to security in the Euro-Atlantic area. Countries like Greece and Turkey joined in the early 1950s, followed by Germany in the mid-50s and Spain in the early 80s. After the end of the Cold War, the alliance opened its doors to the countries of Central and Eastern Europe, marking a significant shift in the global political landscape. The most recent additions to NATO, Montenegro and North Macedonia joined in 2017 and 2020 respectively. But NATO's strength doesn't just lie in its numbers, it's the unity and shared commitment among these diverse nations that make this alliance truly powerful. From the icy landscapes of Iceland to the sun-drenched shores of Greece, from the bustling cities of the United States to the tranquil countryside of Luxembourg, the members of NATO stand shoulder to shoulder, ready to defend each other and uphold the principles of freedom, democracy, and peace. So the strength of NATO lies in its diverse yet united membership. From a humble beginning, NATO has evolved tremendously over the decades. In the early years, NATO's primary concern was countering the threat of the Soviet Union during the Cold War. Its strategy was simple, collective defense. An attack against one member was deemed an attack against all. This principle underpinned NATO's existence and continues to do so today. However, the fall of the Berlin Wall and the subsequent collapse of the Soviet Union in the early 90s marked a significant turning point for NATO. Its existential threat had vanished, and the alliance had to redefine its purpose. NATO began to adopt a broader mandate, including peacekeeping and humanitarian intervention, as evidenced by its missions in the Balkans. Fast forward to the dawn of the new millennium, and NATO faced another critical juncture. The horrific attacks of September 11, 2001, on American soil led to the first ever invocation of Article 5, NATO's Collective Defense Clause. NATO responded by launching the International Security Assistance Force in Afghanistan, marking a shift in its operational focus from Euro-Atlantic security to global security challenges. In more recent years, NATO's evolution has been driven by the changing nature of threats. Traditional state-based threats have been supplemented and in some ways supplanted by non-state threats such as terrorism, cyber attacks, and hybrid warfare. As a result, the Alliance has had to adapt its strategies and capabilities, focusing more on intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance, as well as cyber defense. Moreover, NATO has sought to deepen its partnerships with non-member countries and other international organizations. This collaborative approach is central to NATO's current strategy of cooperative security which aims to enhance international stability, build trust, and prevent conflict. And thus, NATO continues to adapt and evolve to meet the challenges of the modern world. The Alliance's journey from a purely defensive pact to a robust security organization reflects its capacity for change and its commitment to peace and security. As the world continues to change, so too will NATO, ready to face whatever comes its way. But why was NATO formed in the first place? Let's get our facts straight. After the Second World War, Europe was a continent in shambles. The nations were struggling to stand back on their feet, and the threat of Soviet expansion loomed large. The United States and Canada, recognizing the need to safeguard their European allies, led the charge in forming a collective defense mechanism. This was the birth of NATO in April 1949. NATO's primary purpose was, and remains, to protect the freedom and security of its member countries through political and military means. It was created as a system of collective defense where each member agrees to defend any other member that is attacked. This principle is enshrined in Article 5 of the NATO Treaty, which asserts that an attack against one is an attack against all. In essence, NATO was formed to maintain peace and stability in the North Atlantic region. Quite a journey, wasn't it? Let's recap what we've learned today. The North Atlantic Treaty Organization, or NATO, is a powerful international alliance that originated in the shadows of the Cold War. Formed over 70 years ago, it started as a pact of 12 nations, 
and today it's a robust organization of 30 member states. Its evolution is a testament to the changing political landscape. From an alliance designed to counter Soviet aggression, it has morphed into a coalition dealing with a myriad of modern threats from cyber warfare to terrorism. The why of NATO lies in its commitment to collective security. United by the principle of an attack on one is an attack on all, it stands as a bulwark against threats to peace and freedom. And that's a wrap on our deep dive into NATO. Remember, understanding international organizations like NATO helps us grasp the complexities of global politics. Until next time, keep exploring.